You have like a 10 minute speech by any chance. Good evening. On behalf of all the district's faculty, staff, and administration, <laughs> I'd like to extend hearty congratulations to the Mid Month Class of 2014. Graduates, seeing that all 179 of you are on the precipice of some very big changes in your lives, I'd like to share some thoughts tonight regarding change and adaptability. One very cool Monday morning, just this past February, I was sitting in my office contemplating the latest polar vortex and wondering when the godforsaken winter would end when a text popped up on my iPhone. The text read, Good morning, Joey. Greetings from sunny Fort Myers. We're now at 75 degrees. <coughs> Two minutes went by. Then another text appeared. Love you, Joey. Two more minutes, a third text popped up. It read, BTW, dot, 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 this is mine. <laughs> now, I, I have to tell all of you, at this point in my life, the only person who still refers to me as Joey <laughs> is my mom. My 75-year-old mother recently started texting. And in a, in a sweet, goofy kind of way, she thinks that she's kind of hip now that she knows how to text. She hasn't quite figured out, though, that I have saved her cell phone number and that mom mobile actually pops up on my iPhone every time she texts me. But hey, she's trying to adapt to technology. My mom texts me, my wife, my brother, and her grandchildren using one of these, her flip phone. Now, I really don't want to offend anybody in the audience that still owns a flip phone, but it's probably the reason why she's a little slow on the draw when she's texting. My brother, however, is very blunt, as he's always offering to buy her a smartphone, and he repeatedly tells her that she's the only person in the state of Massachusetts that owns a flip phone. Me, on the other hand, I'm the good son. I just keep my mouth shut, I text her back and tell her that I love her. Almost to the day, I graduated from high school 30 years ago as a member of the class of 1984. As I'm sure the parents here tonight can attest, never in our wildest dreams in 1984 did we think that the world would change as much as it has, particularly with regard to technology. Never did we think that someday, just about everyone would carry in their pockets a mini computer one with tremendous capacity to communicate with anybody in the world instantaneously, to take photos, to download music, movies, and TV shows, to use GPS to guide us to our destinations, and even create live six-second live videos. Even 20 years ago, 20 years ago, 1994, we didn't even have the cell phone. As a matter of fact, if we had a few bucks, it was a status symbol to have a car phone, okay? One that actually, it looked like this. Graduates, I present to you what was finally known as the bad phone, all right? We didn't use this to text, to tweet, to Facebook, to Instagram, to Snapchat. We used it to, um, like, make phone calls. How's that for a concept? So we live in a world that's crazy, dizzying in its pace of change. We definitely know this with regard to technology, but what implications does it have for our graduates? According to projections from the National Bureau of Labor Statistics, after the class of 2014 graduates from college or some say post-secondary training, you as a class will be in the workforce on average for 41.2 years. By just 2020, your generation, the millennials, will make up about half of the workforce. Almost 40% of you will work at jobs that at present time do not exist. But probably the most significant statistic 
is that you will average 11.4 jobs during your professional career, which averages a little bit more than three years of tenure per position. With these statistics, you all are in all likelihood looking at a great deal of change and uncertainty at some point in your future. It is little wonder that the notion of adaptability, that is the ability to be flexible, to think, and to use a variety of tools to solve new problems, has been termed an essential survival skill for the 21st century by leading thinkers in business, industry, and education. But how do we actually learn to be adaptable? Turns out there are four habits of mind that studies have shown 